Monday, beautiful people. Happy Monday. beautiful people happy monday it is february the 7th 2022 day 25 of year four of reading through the books of the law and the prophets another four year consecutive day count day 1043 today y'all will read in tablet number eight of the lost book of inky and then hopefully we're going to get to a little bit of my big toe today i don't think chapter um tablet eight is that long let's see eight, six okay mm, yeah no it's not that not that long yeah so we'll we'll definitely get into my big toe today all right so let's get started here real quick with the Shema Shayla that's Babu Great Rising Mom Shalom Shalom Auntie Grand Rising. Let's see, pull this up. Deuteronomy chapter six. All right, y'all, call for wholehearted commitment. These are the commands, decrees, and regulations that the Lord your God commanded me to teach you. You must obey them in the land you're about to enter and occupy, and you and your children and grandchildren must fear the Lord your God as long as you live. If you obey all his decrees and commands, you will enjoy a long life. Listen closely, Israel, and be careful to obey. Then all will go well with you, and you will have many children in the land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, promised you. Listen, O Israel, Yahuwah, I keep saying that. I said I was going to read it like it is. Listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I'm giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you're at home and when you're on the road, when you're going to bed, and when you're getting up. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. The Lord your God will soon bring you into the land he swore to give to you when he made a vow to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It is a land with large, prosperous cities that you did not build. The houses will be richly stocked with goods you did not produce. You will draw water from cisterns you did not dig, and you will eat from vineyards and olive trees you did not plant. When you have eaten your fill in this land, be careful not to forget the Lord who rescued you from slavery in the land of Egypt. You must fear the Lord your God and serve him. When you take an oath, you must only use his name. You must not worship any of the gods of the neighboring nations, for the Lord your God, who lives among you, is a jealous God. His anger will flare up against you, and he will wipe you from the face of the earth. You must not test the Lord your God as you did when you complained at Massa. You must diligently obey the commands of the Lord your God, all the laws and decrees he has given you. Do what is right and good in the Lord's sight, so all will go well with you. Then you will enter and occupy the good land that the Lord swore to give to your ancestors. You will drive out all the enemies living in the land, just as the Lord said you would. In the future, your children will ask you, what is the meaning of these laws, decrees, and regulations that the Lord our God commanded us to obey? Then you must tell them, 
We were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt, but the Lord brought us out of Egypt with his strong hand. The Lord did miraculous signs and wonders before our eyes, dealing terrifying blows against Egypt and Pharaoh and all his people. He brought us out of Egypt so he could give us this land he had sworn to give to our ancestors. And the Lord our God commanded us to obey all these decrees and to fear him so that he can continue to bless us and preserve our lives as he has done to this day. But we will be counted as righteous when we obey all the commands the Lord our God has given us. Levine, blessings, blessings. Okay, y'all. Let's get to it. Trina, hey, girl. Hey, yo. We went to see Moonfall uh, yesterday. Yo. It was good. When we was watching, I was like, this is exactly why Trina said you got to go see this. It was crazy. Very, very interesting, that movie there. I'm not going to be a spoiler to anybody that want to go see it. Go see it. I thought it was crazy how a lot of that information in that movie. Um, when we went to see it yesterday, a lot of the information in that movie kind of seemed to be lining up to the tablet we read yesterday. I was like, James, I was like, this is amazing. First of all, I was like, the reading for today. Okay, go watch it if you haven't. It's still in the movies. Or if you got one of those uh, streaming apps, I don't think it's streaming on any of them yet. You got to check. All right. Anyway, Linda, shalom. Okay, synopsis of Tablet 8. Adapa's wide understanding amazes Nibiru's savants. On a, I'm sorry, on Anu's orders, Adapa is brought to Nibiru, an Earthling's first ever space journey. Inky reveals Adapa's parenting truth to Anu. Inky justifies his decree by the need for more food. Adapa is sent back to farming and shepherding. Enlil and Inky create crop seeds and sheep lines. Ninurta teaches Cain to crop cultivation. Marduk teaches Abel shepherding and wool making. Fighting is over water. Cain strikes and kills Abel. Cain is tried for murder, sentenced to exile. Adapa and Titi have other offspring who intermarry. On his deathbed, Adapa blesses his son Sati as his heir. A descendant, Inki, in kind. Hold on. Yeah. I'm sorry, no, it's not in kind, it's Inky Me. A descendant, Inky Me, is taken by Marduk to Lamu. All right, so when they have this, have this picture, the Nurta and his divine eagle symbol, <laughs> which almost kind of look like the eagle symbol on the back of the dollar bill. I'm just saying. Hold on, let me see. Facebook, can you see? You can see, you ain't got a book screenshot, look at it later. All right. Make sure it's not blurry. Okay. YouTube, Ninurta, and his divine eagle symbol. Was that on the back of a quarter? All right. The eighth tablet. Let Adapa, the earthling. So, um, Adapa is... Who's Adapa? I forgot that quick. Hold on. Adapa is the offspring. It's the grandson of Inky. That's right. Okay. Let Adapa, the earthling to Nibiru, be bought. So did Anu, his decision, declare. By the decision, Enlil was not pleased. Whoever of this would have thought that by a primitive worker fashioning like us, the being would become with knowledge and dial between heaven and earth will travel with knowledge and doubt I'm sorry. On Nibiru, the waters of long life he will drink, the food of long life eat. Like one of us, Anunnaki, shall the one of earth become. So was Enlil to Inki and the other leaders saying, By the decision of Anu, Inki too was not pleased. Sullen was his face after Anu had spoken. After Enlil had spoken, with Enlil his brother Inki agreed. Indeed, who of this would have thought? So to the others did Inky say. The brothers sat and contemplated. Ninma with them was also deliberating. The command of Anu cannot be avoided. To them she said, Let Adapa, 
by our young ones to Nibiru be accompanied, his fright to diminish to Anu things explain. So did Enki to the others say, let Ningish Sita and Dumuzi his companions be, by the way Nibiru for the first time with their eyes also see. By Nema was the suggestion favored, our young ones on earth born of Nibiru are forgetting. Its life cycles by those of earth are overwhelmed. Let the two sons of Enki, as yet unmarried to Nibiru, also travel. Perchance brides there for themselves they shall find. When the next celestial chamber from Nibiru did arrive in Sipar, Ilabrat, a vizier of Anu, from the chamber stepped off. I have come to fetch the earthling Adapa. So to the leaders he said, the leaders to Ilabrat Adapa presented, Titi and her sons to him they also showed. Indeed, in our image and after our likeness they are, so did Ilabrat say. To Ilabrat, Ningish Zita, and Dumuzi, sons of Enki, were presented. To accompany Adapa on his journey, they have been selected to him, Enki said, and knew his grandchildren to see will be pleased. So did Ilabrat say. To hear, instruction, to hear instructions, Enki, Adapa to him, summoned. To Adapa, thus he said, Adapa to Nibiru, the planets whence we had come, you will be going. Before Anu, our king, you will come. To his majesty, you will be presented. Before him, you shall bow. Speak only when asked. To questions, short answers, give. New clothing you will be given. The new garments put on. The bread on earth, not they found, they to you will give the bread is death do not eat and a chalice and elixir to drink they will give the elixir is death do not drink with you ningish zeta and dumuzi my sons will journey to their words hearken and you shall live so did adapa so did inky uh, i'm sorry so did inky adapa instruct this i shall remember adapa said Enki, Ningish Zita, and Dumuzi summoned to them a blessing and advice he gave. Before Anu the king, my father, you are coming. To him you shall bow and homage pay. By princes and nobles, do not be coward. Of them you are the equals. To bring Adapa back to earth is your mission. By Nibiru's delights, be not charmed. This we shall remember, Ningish Zita and Dumuzi said. His young one, Dumuzi, Enki embraced on the forehead he kissed him the wise one Ningish Zita Enki embraced on the forehead he kissed him a sealed tablet in the hand of Ningish Zita unseen he placed to my father Anu this tablet in secret you shall give so did Enki to Ningish Zita say then the two with Adapa and Sapar departed to the place of the celestial chariots they went to Ilabrat, Anu's vizier, the three of them themselves presented. To Ningish Zita and Dumuzi, the garb of Ijiji was given. Like celestial eagles, they were dressed. As for Adapa, his, his unkempt hair was shaven. A helmet as that of an eagle he was given. Instead of his, loin cloth, instead of his loincloth, a tight-fitting vestment he was made to wear. Between Ningish Zita and Dumuzi, inside that which ascends, he was placed. When the signal was given, the celestial chariot roared and shuddered. In fright did Adapa cower and cry. The eagle without wings is soaring. Upon his sides, Ningish Zita and Dumuzi, their arms placed with soothing words, they calmed him. With one league aloft, they were born. Upon the earth they glanced out, its lands they saw, by seas and oceans into parts separated. When two leagues aloft they were, the ocean to a tub grew smaller, the land was the size of a basket. When three leagues aloft they were, they cast a glance whence they had departed. The earth was now a small ball by a sea of darkness in the vastness swallowed. Once again, Adapa agitated was. He cowered and cried out. Take me back, he shouted. Ningish Zita, his hand on the neck of Adapa put, in an instant was Adapa quiet. 
When they on the Biru landed, there was much curiosity. The children of Inki on earth born to see, even more so an earthling to encounter. A being from another world on the Biru has arrived. So were the crowds shouting. With Illibrat to the palace, they were taken to be washed and with perfumed oils anointed. Fresh and befitting garments they were given. Heeding Inky's words, Adapa, the new clothing, did put on. In the palace, nobles and heroes milled about. In the throne room, princes and counselors gathered. To the throne room by Illibrat, they were led. Adapa behind him, then the two sons of Inky. In the throne room, before Anu, the king, they bowed. They bowed. From his throne, Anu stepped forward. My grandsons, my grandsons, he cried out. He hugged the Muzi, he hugged Ningish Zita. With tears in his eyes, he braced, he embraced them, he kissed them. To his right, the Muzi he bade to be seated. On his left, Ningish Zita sat. Then Illibrat to Anu, the earthling, Adapa, presented. Does he our speech understand? Anu the king of Illibrat inquired. Indeed he does. By the Lord Inki was he taught. Illibrat so answered. Come hither, Anu to Adapa said. What is your name and your occupation? Forward, Adapa stepped. Again, he bowed. Adapa is my name of the Lord Enki, a servant. So did Adapa in words speak. His speaking, great amazement was causing. A wonder of wonders on earth has been attained, Anu declared. A wonder of wonders on earth has been attained. All the assembled shouted, let there a celebration be. Let us, our guests, thus welcome, Anu was saying. To the banquet room, Anu, all who were assembled, led to the laden tables, he happily gestured. At the laden tables, bread of Nibiru, a dapple was offered. He did not eat it. At the laden tables, elixir of Nibiru, a dapple was offered. He did not drink it. By this, the king was puzzled. I'm sorry. By this, the king was puzzled was offended why has inky to nibiru this ill-mannered earthling sent to him the celestial ways revealed come now adapa to adapa and who said why did you neither eat nor drink our hospitality rejected my master the lord inky commanded me the bread do not eat the elixir do not drink so did adapa the king and who answer how odd is this thing Anu was saying, for what has Inky from an earthling, our food and elixir prevented? So remember, they was having this conversation. Inky and Enlil was having this conversation. They said, we can't let them eat the food from Nibiru. Otherwise, they're going to gain our life cycles. Or they're going to live forever, right? So he told, he lied to them. He said, Inky, uh, Inky said to Adapa, he said, if they offer you food, don't eat it. It's poison. If they offer you something to drink, don't eat it. It's poison, right? Yahuwah is one, O oh, great spirit creator of all spirits. Teach our spirit your ways that we may glorify you in everything we do. Hallelujah. He asked Illibrat. He asked Demuzi. Illibrat, the answer knew not. Demuzi could not explain. He asked He asked Ningish Zita. Perchance in, the, perchance in this lies the answer. Ningish Zita to Anu said, the secret tablet that he carried hidden to Anu the king, he then gave. Puzzled was Anu. Anu was concerned. To his private chamber, he went the tablet to decipher. Now this is the account of Adapa, of civilized mankind, the progenitor, and how by his sons, Cain and Abel, satiation on the earth was started. Pay attention to this, y'all. This again is sounding real Genesis like, along with the same names, right? Cain and Abel, well known characters from the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings, right? Mm, okay. Now, this is the account of Adapa, of civilized mankind, the progenitor, and how by his sons, Cain and Abel, Cain is spelled K A I N. Matter of fact, and if you look in, I want to say it's the the um, book of remembrance of Enoch, Cain is spelled the same way, K-A-I-N, okay? K, they got K-A dash I-N, K-N, but Cain. And how by his sons, Cain and Abel, satiation on earth was started. In his private chamber, 
Anu, the tablet's seal broke open. Into the scanner, the tablet he inserted, its message from Inky to decipher. That sounds like some high-tech technology, right? Sound kind of like maybe like CDs or UB, UBS, U, I'm sorry, USB drives. Plug it in, the message opens up, you know, but we got to do a little more typing and stuff and finding it on the laptop before it opens. At least that's what's being released to us as of this moment, right? That's what's released to us. In his private chamber, Anu, the tablet's seal, broke open. Into the scanner, the tablet he inserted, its message from Inky to decipher. Adapa, by my seed to an earthling woman, was born. So did the message from Inky say. So this is the first time anybody's hearing the truth besides Inky and his homeboy who got them two women pregnant out there. His homeboy was like, man, go ahead. Ain't nobody watching. I got your back, G. Go ahead. I ain't going to tell nobody. He was the keeper of Inky's secrets. Remember, they said, look, go get them, go get them kids. Bring them here. But when you bring them to the palace, tell them that you found them in a reed basket by the river. Bring them in, right? That's that's what it got the story of Moses from. It, it, it may be a little upsetting, but remember which was created first. Adapa, by my seed to an earthling woman was born. So did the message from Inky say. Likewise was T.T. by another earthling woman of my seed conceived. With wisdom and speech, they are endowed. With Nibiru's long lifetime, they are not. The bread of long giving, he should not eat. The elixir of long life, he should not drink. To live and die on earth, Adapa must return. Mortality, his lot must be. By sowing and shepherding by his offspring on earth, satiations shall be. So did Enki, the secret of Adapa, to his father, Anu, reveal. By the secret message from Inky, Anu was astounded. Whether to be angry or laugh, he knew not. Illibrat his vizier to his private chamber. He summoned to him, he thus said, That son of my ear, even as Inky, his free ways with females has not mended. <laughs> yeah, Trina, I mentioned it. I thought you heard me. I mentioned it after you uh, walked in. You may have clicked out for a second. Yeah, we went to see Moonfall yesterday. Yo, it perfectly, almost perfectly lined up with Tablet uh, 7 yesterday that we read. I'm like, this is why Trina said we need to go watch this movie. I'm telling y'all, the, the stuff that they put out and create, y'all, ain't nobody sitting there coming up with this stuff. They pulling stuff from old tablets and stuff that we're ignorant of. Think somebody got this creative mind. I mean, they do. They've got they've got something so old and added a few modernalities to it and presented afresh. But it's the same friggin' story being told over and over and over again. And let me just say this. It's not by chance that they use Holly Berry as that lead role play. I'm just I'm gonna just say that. Y'all let that sink in based on all the information we're pulling out. Okay. I ain't gonna say no more. That son of mine, Ia. Even as Inky, his free ways with females has not mended. To Illibrat, the his vizier, the message on the tablet he showed. What are the rules? What is the king to do? Of his vizier, Anu inquired. Concubines, by our rules, are permitted. Of interplanetary cohabitation, no rules exist. So did Illibrat to the king respond. If damage there be, let it be restricted. Let Adapa forthwith to earth be returned. Let Ningish, Zeta, and Dumuzi longer stay. Anu, then Ningish, Zeta, to his private chamber summit. Know you what your father's message said of Ningish, Zeta, he inquired. Ningish, Zeta, his head lowered with whispering voice, he said, I know not, but guess I can. The life essence of Adapa I have tested. Of Inki's seed, he is. Homeboy the one and did a DNA test behind his daddy back. Oh, I don't know what it said, but I can guess what it said. I found out that my father Inky is the pappy of a doppel. <laughs> I did the DNA test myself. Okay. Ningish Zeta, his head lowered with whispering voice, he said, I know not, but guess I can. The life essence of Adapa I have tested. Of Inky's seed, he is. That indeed is the message to him, Anu said. Adapa to earth, 
forthwith shall return to be of civilized man a progenitor his destiny shall be as for you ningish zeta to earth with a doppel you shall return of civilized mankind at your father's side to become the teacher so did anu the king the decision make the destiny of adapa and ningish zeta he determined to the assembled savants and nobles princes and counselors and new and the other two return to the assembled words of decision and new announced the welcome to the earthling must not be overextended on our planet he cannot eat or drink of his astounding abilities we have all seen let him to earth return let his offspring there on earth fields till and in meadows shepherd still sounding genesis like to me to ensure his safety and avoid his agitation ningish zeta with him back will travel with him the seeds of nibiru of grains which multiply to earth will be sent demuzi the youngest for a shar with us shall stay then to earth with use and the essence of sheep he shall return this was the de- this was the decision of anu to the king's words all in agreement their heads bowed at the appointed time ningish zeta and adapa to the place of the celestial chariots were taken anu and demuzi elabrat and counselors nobles and heroes to them farewell bade there was a roaring and a shuddering and the chariot was lofted the planet nibiru grow smaller they saw then from horizon to zenith the heavens they saw on their journey ningish zeta and adapa the planet gods explained of sun and earth and the moon to him lessons he gave of how the months chase after one another and how earth's year is counted him he taught when to earth they returned to his father inki ningish zeta all that had happened related Inky laughed and struck his loins. You know how you laugh and just slap your thigh. Yeah. Inky laughed and struck his loins. It all went as I expected with glee, he said, except the detention of Demuzi. That is to me a puzzle, so did Inky say. By the prompt return of Ningish Zeta and Adapa, Enlil was greatly puzzled. What is the matter? What on Nibiru transpired of Inky? And Ningish Zeta, he inquired. Let Nenma be let Nenma too be summoned. Let her too of what transpired here. To Inky to him said, After Nenma arrived, to Enlil and to her Ningish Zeta all did tell. Inky, his cohabitation with the earthling females also related. No rules have I broken. Our satiation our satiation i have ensured so inky to them said no rules did you break the fate of anunnaki and earthlings by a rash deed you determined so did enlil in anger say now the lot is cast destiny by fate is overtaken with fury was enlil seized with anger he turned and left them standing to eridu marduk came by his mother damkina was he summoned the odd ongoings to verify of his father and brother he demanded to keep the secret from marduk hidden father and brother decided anu by the civilized man was enthralled to at once all on earth satiate he commanded so they to marduk only part of the truth revealed by adapa and titi marduk was impressed to the boys he took a liking while ningish zeta adapa is instructing let me the boy's teacher be so did marduk to his father inky and to enlil say let marduk teach one let ninurta teach the other to them enlil responded in iridu ningish zeta with adapa and tt stayed numbers and writing adapa he taught the twin who was first in birth ninurta to bad tibera his city took Cain, who was Cain, he who in the fields, I'm sorry, Cain, he who in the field food grows, he called him. To dig canals for watering, he taught him. 
sowing and reaping he was teaching a plow from the wood of trees and an nurture for Cain made with it a tiller of the land to be the other brother son of Adapa, by Marduk to the meadows was taken Abel he was of the water meadows his name was thereafter called how to build stalls Marduk taught him for shepherding to start the return of Demuzi, they awaited. When the shar was completed, Demuzi to earth returned. The essence seed of sheep used for growing with him, he bought. Four-legged animals of Nibiru to another planet, the earth, he conveyed. His return with essence seeds and used was cause for much celebration. Into the care of his father, Enki, Demuzi with his precious cargo returned. The leaders then got together how to proceed with the new breed they considered. Never before was there a you on earth. A lamb has never to earth from the heavens been dropped. A she-goat has never before to her kid given birth. Weaving of sheep's wool has never before been established. The Anunnaki leaders, Enki and Enlil, Ninma and Ningish Zeta, who the creators were. A creation chamber, a house of fashioning to establish, decided upon the pure mound of the landing place in the cedar mounds, in the cedar mountains, it was established near where the elixir seeds by Nima Bort were planted. There was the creation chamber established. There was the multiplying of grains and of the ewes on earth begun of Cain for sowing and reaping. Ninurta was the mentor of Abel, the arts of you and lamb rearing and, she and, sh and shepherding. Marduk was the mentor. When the first crops were reaped, when the first sheep matured, let there be a celebration of first. Feast the first fruits. Kind of sound like that to me. What about y'all? Remember? First of the crops, the first of his cattle. We're going to offer it to the Lord. Okay. Of Abel, the arts of you and lambs, rearing and sheep herding, a shepherding. Marduk was the mentor. When the first crops were reaped, when the first sheep matured, let there be a celebration of first. Enlil, a decree proclaimed before the assembled Anunnaki, the first grains, the first lambs were presented. At the feet of Enlil and Enki came by an inert guided his offspring place. At the feet of Enlil and Enki, Abel by Marduk guided his offering placed. Yeah, that's real genesis-y, genesis like Enlil to the brothers gave a joyful blessing. Their labors he extolled. Enki, his son Marduk, embraced the lamb for all to see he raised. Meat for eating, wool for wearing, to earth have come, Enki said. Yep, first fruits. Jen Shalom. <clears throat> now this is the account of the generations of Adapa and the killing of Abel by Cain and what thereafter transpired. If I didn't believe that the Bible was taken from these more ancient Sumerian texts that were created probably... 5,000 something years before the Bible even came into existence. At this point, I knew that they had been screwed up because I am very familiar with the Bible, the newest creation, right? Hmm. And I'm the one being called a heretic and I'm just reading to y'all. People calling me a heretic <laughs> and speaking blasphemous language. These are not my words. I'm simply sharing with y'all what I found. And we're trying to figure this out together. Right? Grand awakening. Uncle JB. All right. Now this is the... Hold on. Dana said meat for eating. Hmm. And I thought that too, Dana. We're going to keep reading, right? Still, it remained... Don't, don't, I ain't going to say you. I think you plant-based anyway. Listen. Don't go back to eating meat because this said it. Test it. Test everything. Meat still kills this, right? Meat still kills this. I know you're not, but I'm just saying for somebody that heard that, don't be looking for reasons to continue killing your body, people. Meat causes the this flesh to decay, right? It causes this to decay. 
Tiffany. Hey, girl. Hey. Thank you, mother. Quick fingers. Okay. Now, this is the account of the generations of Adapa and the killing of Abel by Cain and what thereafter transpired. After the celebration of fruit, I'm sorry, after the celebration of first was over, sullen was Cain's face, right? Remember that story from Genesis? Yeah, right, Jen, that's right. When you actually cleanse your body of meat, you no longer crave it. Like once you literally get it out of your system and all that flesh get out of your intestines that's been sitting for years, you know, and a, a good fast will help get that, um, they call it muco, muco, mucoid plaque. A good fast will help push that out. A water fast to get it out faster between day 10 and 15, possibly, depending on how backed up you are. Especially if you've never done a fast in your life. I think that happened for me. My That happened for me when I did my very first fast right um it's like not my very first fast but my very first long fast it was day number 10 where that has been pushed out of my system and i'm like what is that what have i eaten and i started looking up and then that's when i ran into mucoid plaque that's what's been sitting in your intestines for years that's how colon cancer is developed for those that didn't know that mucoid plaque that sits in your colon all cancers all cancers, all cancers come from what you put in your mouth, what you eat. Now, I'm not a medical doctor, right? That's my disclaimer. I don't want to get my channel banned for telling you that. But in my studies, in my findings, I would say 99% of everything that happened, let me give it a two, uh, 2%. I say 98% of what happens to this body happens because of what you put in your mouth and the other two percent i'm gonna leave for what happens to you birth defects because it's something that your host i called your mom a host <laughs> what your mom did or something that took place in a womb and the other one percent is outside trauma that happens to you that you may or may not have control over right that's what deteriorates and breaks down and kills the body but the other 98 percent is completely controllable by you and you can live a very long life if you can control that 98 percent that other two percent you one of them percents you don't have any kind of control over right but that other percent you got 50 percent control over right but everything else comes from what you put in your mouth and depend on how bad or how good you treat your body will determine how your cancer manifests outwardly whether it's breast cancer colon cancer any other kind of cancer uh uh believe it or not aids right AIDS literally falls in the category of cancers, right? It's an autoimmune disease, but it can be cleared up with fruits and veggies. They want to pump drugs into you and kill another thing while it looks to be curing something else. Stay away from pharmaceuticals altogether unless it's for controlling pain or whatever. But I'm not a medical doctor. Go seek out a medical doctor and preferably a well-trained holistic doctor that's going to help nurse you back to health via natural foods that grow into the grow from the earth that's all that's all i want to say yep but once you get it out of your system you don't crave it anymore even if you got to wean yourself even if you have to wean yourself if you're doing all kinds of meat if you're still eating pork stop eating pork right you still be eating everything else i mean that's how i did it. i didn't go cold turkey from the rest of everything i actually it's been years i stopped eating pork then I stopped eating red meat. And the last thing, I stopped eating chicken. And then I was only eating like seafood, right? And then when I got pregnant with Josh 11 years ago, I absolutely, and I was only eating, when I stopped eating the pork, I, with the other meats that I was eating, they was all from the clean foods list. But it was still tearing my body up, right? And so I went cold turkey from the rest of what I was eating. Um, clean foods, but a clean seafoods. Well, with the exception of shrimp. Shrimp wasn't clean, but, you know, I had a special liking for shrimp. I made sure I cleaned it real good, but still, you can't clean out what's been ingested 
and made a part of its flesh, right? Because what you eat, you, you literally become. Like the food you put in your mouth is actually information for your body to assimilate. And whatever information that living or dead food carries, it will translate it into this operating system and it will become a part of you. So if you're putting dead things in your body, your body is assimilating and making you more dead, right? If it's living foods, it's going to assimilate it. It's going to heal those dead places and make you more alive, right? And you can feel the difference in your body. That's something that you can simply test without arguing with anybody whether you can or you can't eat meat. I'm just saying. Do your own due diligence. Okay. Now, this is the account of the generations of Adapa and the killing of Abel by Cain and what thereafter transpired. After the celebration of first was over, sullen was Cain's face. By the lack of Inky's blessing, greatly he was aggrieved. To their task, the brothers returned. Abel, before his brother, was boasting. And we actually, we don't see Abel boasting in the Bible. But if you go to the book of Jasher, you'd be like, oh, Abel was running his mouth. <laughs> Not that that was any reason for Cain to kill him, but he wasn't, he wasn't really innocent. You feel good? You on day seven? Oh, Trina, girl, look, you made it through the movies without, girl, you, a round of applause for Trina. She is on day seven of a water fast, y'all. Tell you, once you can get past, I would say day five, that energy starts to kick in. Once you get done fighting with that ghrelin machine on the inside of your body that reminds you, hey, you need to eat, you need to eat, you need to eat. The ghrelin happens when you, when you eat at certain times of the day, your body starts recognizing those times that you eat. So it starts those gastric acids going inside your body, which makes you hungry at the same time every day. And if you're snacking throughout the day, you're always hungry. It's because that's how you how you train the ghrelin in your body to operate. But once you get past them first five days, your body is literally reset. And when it realizes no more food is coming in here, it goes inwardly and begin to eat the stored fat so all that extra weight and stuff that we carry around on our bodies a good fast to activate it and, and get it moving so now instead of eating here the body begins to eat from its fat stores it'll eat up all the fat first right he was right about day five yeah girl look i know right i'm telling you it works you just gotta try it and you're gonna feel good once you you can go I say from day five all the way up, I want to say like day 21, from my experience, it's going to be like smooth sailing that, 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 um, that energy is going to be like, boom, boom, boom. It's like, what in the world? And you're going to, you're going to start thinking like, well, why did doctors say you need this and you need this and be careful about water fast, right? Because it heals the body. Your mind becomes clear. A lot of things happen. And so it's no wonder they tell you, you make sure you fast under the supervision of a doctor. You take it slow. Don't just jump out there. Why? Because if everybody decided to fast and get back to the habit of fasting, which is a natural thing for us to do, the hospitals will be put out of business, right? So now understood why doctors are this and this and that. Granted, even if you have some medical issues going on, I would still say, at least talk to your doctor. They're going to try and talk you out of it, right? They're going to try and talk you out of it. But it comes a point when you have to take your health into your own hands, right? You didn't destroy your health. Now it's time for you to get a little bit more informed about what you're doing. I ain't saying jump out there. If you're taking a bunch of medicines, at least start looking into the stuff. Start looking into it and just weaning yourself. It can happen. Be careful, right? But with knowledge and wisdom, you can break yourself free from the whole of pharmaceuticals and simply by fasting. If you can't straight water fast, get you some fresh fruit juices, right? And it will heal your body and that'll be an easier way. And that's something I would actually recommend if you are on a lot of um, medicines, start with juice fasting, right? And as your body begins to heal, the, the nutrients from the fresh raw fruit juices, no store-bought juices, coconut water fresh fruits get you a juice or a fresh presser it'll begin to heal and restore the body right and you have to pay attention to your body because it's going to start rejecting the medicine but you have to be aware of that so you know okay let me taper it down a little bit right because now you're 
if you're still taking that medicine while you're healing your body, it's kind of defeating the purpose and your body is going to go to war inside itself. So you have to be mindful of that if you're trying to wean yourself off of medicine. Watch it carefully, right? Okay. It's a lot of research on that online. You can find it. You can find it in a lot of good places. All right. Cain, by his brother's words, was offended. To his boasting, strongly he objected. It is I who the plains luxurates, who, fur who furrows with grains make heavy, in whose fields birds multiply, in whose canals fish become abundant, sustained by bread, by me is produced, with fish and fowl, the Anunnaki's diet I variate, right? So he was boasting about um, him being a shepherd and everything multiplying and food being abundant because of him and what his job is, right? The farming. Ninurta, by the words of Marduk, was saddened. Silence, not words, his answer was. Let me, with Marduk, my son, words in private have, to them, Inky said. When in Inky's private chamber, he and Marduk were. My son, my son, to Marduk, Inky softly spoke. Your agony is great. Let us not agony with agony compound. A secret that on my heart has heavily emburdened, let me you tell. Once upon a time, as by the river I strolled, two earthling maidens my fancy caught. By them from my seed were Adapa and Titi conceived, a new kind of earthling, a civilized man, by that upon the earth was bought. Whether they to procreate, were Abel, our king, Anu, in doubt was. By the birth of Cain and Abel were Anu and the council on Nibiru convinced. A new phase of Anunnaki presence on this planet was welcome and approved. Now that Abel has been slain, and if Cain too shall be extinguished, satiation to an end would come. Mutinies will be repeated. All that was achieved shall crumble. No wonder that to Abel you took a liking. The son of your half-brother he was. Now, on to the other one, half pity. Let the line of Adapa survive. So did Enki with sadness a secret to Marduk his son revealed. By the revelation, Marduk was at first astounded. Then by laughter, he was overcome. Of your love-making prowess, much to me was rumored. Now of that I am convinced. Indeed, let Cain's life be spared. To the ends of the earth, let him be banished. Same thing that happened in Genesis, right? Let him be banished. Get him out of here. Send him to the land of Nod. What? Let me jump in all the way back 10 years from. What happened? You should come sit and listen, son. So did Marduk from anger to laughter changing. To his father say, in Iridu, judgment upon Cain by Inki was pronounced. Eastward to a land of wandering oh. for his evil deed, Cain, and Cain must depart. That his life must be spared, he and his generation shall be distinguished. By Ningish Zeta was the life essence of Cain altered. That his face, a beard, should not grow. Cain's life essence Ningish Zeta changed with his sister Awan as a spouse Cain from the Eden departed to the land of wandering he set his course and I believe that was the same name that we find for her also in the book of Jasher right it was the book of Jasher right her name was in there now the Anunnaki sat among themselves now the Anunnaki sat and among themselves wondered without Abel Without Cain, who shall for us the grains grow and bread make? Who shall be the shepherd, the ewes multiply, wool for clothing provide? Let Adapa and Titi more proliferation be, so did the Anunnaki say. With the blessing of Enki, Adapa, his spouse Titi, knew again and again. One daughter, another daughter, each time again and again they were born. In the 95th shard, a son, Adapa and Titi, finally had Sati, he who life binds again. Titi named him. By him were the generations of Adapa counted. That sounds to me like Sati is Seth, right? It sounds like Seth to me. 
In all, 30 sons and 30 daughters Adapa and Titi had, of them tillers of the land and shepherds for the Anunnaki toil. By them did satiation to Anunnaki and civilized earthlings come back. In the 97th shard, to Sati, a son by his spouse, Azura, was born. By the name Enshi, in the annals, he was recorded. Master of humanity met his name. By Adapa, his father, writing in numbers, he was made to understand. And who the Anunnaki were and all about Nibiru by Adapa, in she was told to, Nib to Nibiru Ki, the sons of Enlil, he was taken. Secrets of the Anunnaki, they taught him how the perfume oils for anointing Nanar, Enlil's on earth, the eldest, him showed <clears throat> how the elixir from the Enbu fruits to prepare Ishkur, Enlil's youngest, him instructed. It was since then that by civilized man, the Anunnaki lords were called and of the rites of worship of the Anunnaki that the beginning was. Thereafter to Enshi by his sister Noam, a son was born. And this right up here where it says, it was since then that by civilized man, the Anunnaki lords were called. Wasn't it during the time of Enoch when men began to call on the Lord? I'm just saying, you got to be real familiar with the text that they've given us in order to catch this buffoonery. It was since then that by civilized man, the Anunnaki lords were called and of the rites of worship of the Anunnaki that the beginning was. Thereafter to Enshi by his sister Nome, a son was born. Kunin, he of the kilns, his name had the meaning. For by Niberta, and bad, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> For by Niberta and bad Tibera, he was tutored of furnace and kiln. There he learned how with bitumens fire to make fires to make, how to smelt and refine. He was taught in the smelting and refining of gold for Nibiru. He and his offspring toiled in the ninety eighth shar. Did this manner come about? Now, this is the account of the generations of Adapa after Cain was exiled. Let me see how many, Okay, we got like four pages. Yeah. We got about four pages left. Okay. Now, this is the account of generations of Adapa after Cain was exiled and the heavenly journeys of Inkimi and the death of Adapa. In the 99th Shar, to Kunin, a son was born. By Mulit, a half-sister of Kunin, he was conceived. Malalu, he who plays, she named him. In music and song, he excelled. For him, Ninurta, a stringed heart made. A flute for him, he shaped. Hymns to Ninurta, Malalu played. With his daughters before Ninurta, they sang. The spouse of Malalu, the daughter of his father's brother, was... Duna was her name, and the one hundredth Shar, since the count on earth had begun, a son to Malalu and Duna was born, their firstborn he was, Irid, he of the sweet waters, his mother Duna, him named, him Demuzi, how well to dig, <clears throat> excuse me, how well to dig he taught, for flocks in distant meadows water to provide. It was there by the wells and the meadows that the shepherds and the maidens gathered. Were espousing and proliferation by civilized mankind exceedingly abounded. In his days, the Ejiji to earth were more frequently coming to observe and see from the heavens. They increasingly abandoned to watch and see what on earth was transpiring they increasingly desired to be with them on Lamu, Inki, Marduk, Beseech. To watch and see what on earth was transpiring, Marduk more fervently wished. At a well in the meadows did I read his spouse meet. Baraka was her name, the daughter of his mother's brother she was. At the conclusion of the hundred and second shard, a son to them was born. By the name Inki, me, by Inki, me, understanding in the annals he was called 
wise, and intelligent he was. Numbers he quickly understood about the heavens and all matters celestial. He was constantly curious. To him, the Lord Enki took a liking. Secrets once to Adapa revealed to him, he told, of the family of the sun and the twelve celestial gods. Enki, him, was teaching how the months by the moon were counted and the years by the sun, and how by Nibiru the shards were counted and how the counts by Enki were combined. How the Lord Enki, the circle of the heavens to twelve parts divided, a constellation to each one, how Enki assigned twelve stations in a grand circle he arranged. Right? Sounds like the zodiac. Mm, yep, that's about right. Who y'all think this is? We actually... Enki Me has already been mentioned in its last section. This section is giving a little bit more detail about how Enki Me grew up. So by this description you should be able to tell who this is from the Bible, right? Or the, uh, if I say this book, I'm going to just give it away. <laughs> just listen. If y'all know who it is, type it in. Facebook or YouTube. Let me go back. Okay. About the heavens and all matters celestial, he was continually curious. To him, the Lord Enki took a liking. Secrets once to adopt or reveal to him, he told of the family of the sun and the twelve celestial gods, Enki, him, was teaching. And how the months by the moon were counted, and the years by the sun, and how by Nibiru the shards were counted, and how the counts by Enki were combined. How the Lord Enki, the circle of the heavens, to twelve parts divided, a constellation to each one, how Enki assigned twelve stations in a grand circle he arranged. How to honor the 12 Anunnaki great leaders by names the stations were called. To explore the heavens, Enki Me was eager. Two celestial journeys he did make. And this is the account of Enki Me's journey to the heavens. And how the Ejiji troubles and intermarriages by Marduk were started. Everybody so far this answer has got it right. It is Enoch. Sounds like the book of Enoch, Uncle JB, Enoch, Linda, Enoch, Jen, Enoch. Yes, you all are correct. This is Enoch. Inky me is Enoch in the Bible, in the book of Enoch. <clears throat> Keep listening. If y'all not too sure, y'all think we fib into you, go pull it up. Matter of fact, the Bible's only going to give you two lines about Enoch. But you go to the book of Jasher, go to... um legends of the jews and also go to the book of enoch and you will see real clearly that this is the same character they are one and the same to be with marduk in the landing place inky me was sent from there marduk in a rocket ship to the moon did him take there what marduk from his father inky had learned to inky me he did teach when to earth inky me returned to be with utu and sipper the place of the chariots he was sent. There was a tablet for writing what he was learning by Utu to Enki me was given. Utu in his bright abode, a prince of earthlings, him installed. The rites him he taught, the functions of priesthood to begin. Be Remember? Hmm? Bobby Hammett. I love he like how he talked because it reminded me of dad's side. <laughs> <laughs> they just um, don't care. Yeah, exactly. I'm just like, oh They're going to give it to you up and down, front, back, with side to side, however you want it. They're going <laughs> to give it. He said, new nigga, I mean, a new brother. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> okay. All right, Jeremiah, yeah. listen. Okay. That was funny. There was a tablet for writing what he was learning by Utu and Inky Me was given. <clears throat> Utu in his bright abode, a prince of earthlings, him installed. The rites, him he taught, the functions of priesthood to begin. And Sipar with his spouse, Edeni, a half-sister, Inky Me resided. To them in the 104th Shar, a son was born. Matushal, his mother named him, who by the brightest, who by the bright waters, the, I'm sorry, who by the bright waters raised the name Met. This is close. What was Enoch's son name? <clears throat> Methuselah, right? And here, Inky Me's son's name is Methushal. Methuselah. It's the same people, people. Methushal, his mother, him named, who by the bright waters 
raised the name meant. It was after that, you're welcome, Pooh. It was after that that Inky me on his second journey to the heavens went. That's where Enoch spent most of his time, right? He would he would go in, he would go home and he would fast for a few days, then he would leave out and he'd be gone for a few days. And them few days turned into weeks, and them weeks turned into months, and the months turned into year and years, and um they went looking for him because every time he came back, he had so much more wisdom to share with them until they decided to make Enoch their king. Enoch was the first king. What was that? Say that right? Enoch was the first king. Mm, I would say Enoch of civilized man was the first king. Actually installed as first king, right? Based on all the information and stuff he bought. He bought by the information from the heavens, all that stuff. If you're not familiar with it, go read the book of Jasher. Go read the book of Enoch, right? All of this stuff that it, it, they pulling it from here, right? <clears throat> it was after that that Inky me on his second journey to the heavens went. This time too, Marduk was his mentor and companion. In a celestial chariot, heavenward they soared toward the sun and away from it they circled. To visit the Ejiji on Lamu by Marduk he was taken. To him the Ejiji a liking took. The civilized earthling from him they learned. Of him it is in the annals said that to the heavens he departed. That in the heavens he stayed until the end of his days. Do we not still believe that, that Enkimi is Enoch? Ain't this exactly what the biblical text and extra biblical text say about Enoch? And all of them came after this. I'm just saying, people. I'm just saying. Am I tripping? I don't think I'm tripping at this point. And Enoch is my dude. I know him up, down, left, right, in and out. He's, he he was turned into Metatron, the angel of the faces, right? I know Enoch very well. And this is Enoch, even though you're calling him by another name. That's Enoch, my G. To visit the Ejiji on Lamu by Marduk, he was taken. To him, the Ejiji, a liking took of civilized earthlings from him, they learned. Of him, it is in the annals said that to the heavens he departed, that in the heavens he stayed to the end of his days. Before Enkimi, for the heavens departed, all that in heaven he was taught in writings, Enkimi, a recording made for his sons to know he wrote it, that all that is in the heavens, in the family of the sun, he wrote down. And about all the quarters of the earth and its lands and its rivers too. To the hands of Methuselah, or to the hands of Methushal, his firstborn son, the writings he entrusted. With his brothers, Ragim and Gedad, to study and abide by. And the 104th Shar was Methushal, born. To the EGG troubles and what Mar what Marduk had done, he was a witness. By his spouse, Enat, a son to Matushal, was born. Lumak, Lumak, Lamech. <laughs> They're sounding alike to me still. These are the same characters. By his spouse, Enat, Ednat, a son to Matushal, was born. Lumak. Mighty man was his name. In his days, conditions on the earth became harsher. The toilers in the field, a meadow, raised complaints. As a workmaster, the Anunnaki Lumak appointed the quotas to enforce, the rations to reduce. In his days, it was that Adapa, his death time, attained. And when Adapa knew his days to an end were coming. Let my sons. Hold on. Did I do Hold on. Yeah. And when Adapa knew that his days to an end were coming, let all my sons and sons of sons assemble themselves to me, he said, that before I die, I may bless them and the words to them speak before I die. And when Sati and the sons of the sons he had gathered, where is Cain, my firstborn? Adapa of them all asked, let him be fetched to them all, he said. Before the Lord Enki, Sati, his father's wish presented, what to be done of the Lord, he asked. Then, I'm sorry, Enki then, Ninurta summoned, let the banished one of whom the mentor you were to Adapa's deathbed be bought. In his bird of heaven, 
Then Ner to betook himself to the land of wandering. He flew the land of Nod, right? That's what the land of Nod is called, the land of wandering. Let him wander. Enki, then in Nerta summit, let the banished one of whom the mentor you were to Adapa's deathbed be bought. And his bird of heaven in Nerta betook himself to the land of wandering he flew. Over the lands he roamed, from the skies for Cain he searched. And when he found him, like on eagle's wings, Cain to Adapa he bought. When of his son's arrival, Odapa was informed, let Cain and Sati before me come, or Cain and Seth, right? Odapa said, before their father, and Odapa was the, okay, when you go back and you read Genesis, there is a few different Adams in there. You will see, if, if you go back and read this, you remember the first Adam, Adamu, we got a little, they put a little bit about him in Genesis. And then if you're not paying attention, it switches to this more civilized version of Adam, which is named Adapa, right? It was from Adapa, Adapa that the generations began to be counted after he had Seth or Sati, right? You got to be paying close attention. They pull this Jedi mind trick on you all the way through the Bible, y'all. But if you're not, if you're not even, if you haven't even just spent time getting familiar with the story, when you go read something else, you won't even notice it, right? That's why I'm so thankful at this point. Because some days I say, I'm like, what is all this for? This just seems like, what's the purpose? Why? Why do I keep even doing this? I'm just, why? Right? <laughs> and then... Sometime throughout the day, when I get to that point, somebody will send an email or something, and this and it are just like, okay, thank you, Father. We're helping wake people up to the truth. Thank you. Because some days I'm just like, forget it. I'm just going to go and hide it. I'm going to go do my studying on myself. Let everybody else do it themselves, just like I did. Why? Right? Look. But then I realized, wait a minute. This was needed for me to do this, to even be able to put this together. Some people may not have the time. Not that I'm the only one, but some people may not have the time to do what I've done since 2013 right but all this is like coming together now it's two yeah it's a mix of it i would say it's more than two uh magnesi it's a it's two creation stories in genesis i think it's a little bit more there's there's a few mixtures of creation stories from what i've seen personally in genesis right okay <clears throat> before the lord hold on wait a minute I think I went back up too far. Okay, I'll start right here. <clears throat> when of his son's arrival, Adapa was informed, let Cain and Sati before me come, Adapa said. Before their father, the two Cain, Cain, the firstborn on the right, Sati on the left. And the eyesight of Adapa having failed for recognition, his son's faces he touched. And the face of Cain on the right was beardless, and the face of Sati on the left with beard was. When I started talking about the beards and the beardless, <clears throat> I started wondering about different nations of people who cannot grow beards, right? And that in itself just amazed me that I began to look at this and realize there's a certain group of people that cannot grow facial hair, men, right? The women don't either, but they cannot grow facial hair. And I'm like, yo, it's something to this. Even all of this, even if all of this is a fabrication, the, the ancient Sumerian text, the Bible, and they everybody just repeat off here, we just get it to them. And what's really true, we keep that, nobody gets that. Something is true about it. There are bits and pieces and elements of truth in here. Whether they created these stories around them, truth is still there because we can look at it. We can see it and we can test it. And I think that's what really is most important. <clears throat> the things that we find out to be true and that are testable, right? So if, if, you, if you're married to stories and stuff, it's going to take you a little bit longer to grow, right? Once you unmarry yourself to these stories, like this is it, this is all in all, that's all I want to hear, you're going to stunt your growth, right? Because you really should be taking the principles out of these stories to help you grow. When I was a child, I did childish things. Now it's time to put the childish things away. That's what we're really looking for here. Not so much 
the stories because they're still as long as they translating stuff they're gonna be doing some stuff that screwed up it's gonna be some information they don't want the masses to have they want to keep those in power want to keep the upper hand on the masses of people so it's some that they have to keep for themselves right but there are definitely some things that we can uncover ourselves simply by testing <laughs> you know yeah, there are some women who can grow facial hair. Not that they trying to, Trina said. There are some women that can. I've been trying to get these little pricklies off my chin for years. Look, don't start shaving. That's going to make it worse. I'm not saying you're doing it. But some women, oh, I'm sick of this. I'm going to just get me a mm, And now you got a, you got a whole 5 o'clock shadow growing around your face. And you don't know what to do. I was watching this. And I was like, wait a minute. Is that a man or is that a woman? Voice. I was like, she ain't got no atoms. I was like, sis. She didn't try to get rid of that the wrong way. Now it's just multiplying all over her face. Like, what do you do? What do you do? And some women, they get all that. It's like, man, forget it. It is what it is. What? You going to say something? Don't nobody say nothing, but they just be looking at it like, mm-hmm. You trying to keep your eyes in contact with them, but you got one or two eyes drifting down to them chin hairs and stuff. Like, do something about that. <laughs> Sit all day picking at them. I can't lie. I got a couple stray hairs <laughs> that I pick <laughs> faithfully every two weeks <laughs> with tweezers. I won't try to attack them with anything more than tweezers, right? Look. <laughs> but I guess it's, uh, I guess, depending on the amount of testosterone that certain women have in their bodies, and it could not, it um might not be the testosterone. It could just be from their diet. And the hormones, especially if they're eating animals, it could be different things. It just depends on, you know, the body, the diet, all that stuff. You know, I don't know, but I digress. Okay. When of his son's arrival, Odapa was informed, let Cain and Sati before me come, Odapa said. Before their father, the two Cain, Cain, the firstborn on the right, Sati on the left. And the eyesight of Adapa having failed for recognition, his sons, his his sons' faces he touched. And the face of Cain on the right was beardless, and the face of Sati on the left with beard was. And Adapa put his right hand on the head of Sati, the one, the one on the left. And he blessed him and said, Of your seed shall the earth be filled. And of your seed as a tree with three branches, mankind, a great calamity shall survive. Who that sound like? I'm going to read that again. Listen to this. And we're going to see it. And of your seed as a tree with three branches, mankind, a great calamity shall survive. And he put his left hand on the head of Cain. And he put his, I'm sorry. And he put his left hand on the head of Cain on his right and to him, he said, for your sin of your birthright, you are deprived. But of your seed, seven nations shall come. Okay, Noah. I mean, I, okay, Noah. No, I meant, okay, Linda. It is, it is Noah. Uncle JB, <clears throat> I can see how you thought about Abraham. I can see how you thought about Abraham. But remember of three branches, right? Who only had three sons? Noah from his three branches, right? His three sons. <clears throat> Noah, right. Okay. For your sin of your birthright, you are deprived. But of your seed, seven nations shall come. In a realm set apart, they shall thrive. Distant lands, they shall inhabit. But having your brother with a stone killed, by a stone will be your end. And when Adapa finished saying these words, his hands dropped and he sighed and said, Now summon my spouse Titi and all the sons and all the daughters. And after my spirit leaves me to my birthplace by the river, carry me. I'll go back up a couple sentences. When he said, having... But having your brother with a stone killed by a stone will be your end. And you can actually see that in the book of Jasher. It's told a couple different times. One says that he was killed by a rock. Um, another says that his house collapsed on him, right? But it's still about stone that he died, right? No matter how they interpret it, it was by the stone. Since he killed by he, he killed his brother with a since he killed his brother with a stone. 
a stone was the way he left the earth as well. So whether somebody hit him with a stone or his house fell on him that was made of stones, he still died by a stone, right? <clears throat> but having your brother with a stone killed by a stone will be your end. And when Adapa finished these words saying, his hands dropped and he sighed and said, now summon my spouse Titi and all the sons and all the daughters. And after my spirit leaves me to my birthplace by the river, carry me. And with my face toward the rising sun, there bury me. Like a wounded beast, Titi cried out to her knees by Adapa's side, she fell. And the two sons of Adapa, Cain and Sati, in a loincloth, his body wrapped. In a cave by the banks of the river, by Titi shone, <clears throat> Adapa they buried. In the midst of the 93rd Shar was he born. By the end of 108th, he died. A long life for an earthling he had. The life cycle of Inki he did not have. And after Adapa was buried, came to his mother and brother, farewell babe. Ninurta, in his bird of heaven, to the land of wandering, him returned. In a distant realm, Cain had sons and daughters, and he for them built a city. And as he was building, by a falling stone, he was killed. In the Eden, Lumak, or Lamech, as a workmaster, the Anunnaki served. In the days of Lumak, or Lumak, did Marduk and the Ejiji with earthlings intermarry. And that, my beautiful people, is the end of tablet number eight. It's getting good. It's getting better by the day, y'all. Right? All right. So we're going to see this uh, this rebellion happening here soon. We're going to get into it tomorrow. All right. Whew. That was a good stretch. So that was really good. All right. We had an hour and 16 minutes. Let's see if we can um, get through a little bit more of my big toe today. Chapter 19. And we stopped on page 139. All right. By now... You may be wondering if there is such a thing as good belief. All right. So remember the last time we read it, which was day before yesterday, was talking about dogma and belief. They're like straight jackets on the mind. Right. Y'all remember that day? Okay. By now, you may be wondering if there is such a thing as good belief. I can best answer that question with another question. Is there such a thing as good ignorance? Is there any situation where ignorance is better, more valuable than knowledge? If there is, then wherever and whenever ignorance is best, that is where you will find a good belief. In the short term and in the little picture, you might find some advantages, some advantages to ignorance in a few special cases. Ignorance is perhaps not so bad. If the problem is of little significance and of minimal importance or one you can do nothing about, if you are trying to trick, use, or manipulate others to your advantage, their ignorance is always very helpful, right? Like we was just saying. While we're ignorant of some of these older texts, it's useful to those who are using that particular um Yes, babe. That particular avenue no. of deceit to Mom, fool us. Yes. No, not right now, Pooh. Mm -hmm. Uh-uh. First of all, you're not going to start that this morning. Especially not while I'm live. Don't start. You're not getting ice cream first thing this morning. <laughs> Go upstairs with your dad, Bella. Don't start. <laughs> you like to pull them shenanigans when I get live. You think I'm going to tell you yes? Ice cream. Go tell your dad I said, come here. And we'll you talk to both of us together. If dad say you can have some, then you can have some. But don't start them shenanigans with me first thing this morning, little girl. Go. Hold on. If you are trying to trick, use, or manipulate others to your advantage, their ignorance is always very helpful. In the long run and in the big picture, if you are not trying to manipulate others and your ego is small, ignorance has little to no value. If the issues are significant, the stakes high, or the outcome important to you, then ignorance and belief will leave you vulnerable and looking like an ostrich with its head in the sand. In substantive, in substantive matters of long-term significance, there is no good belief. The main use and function of belief or pseudo-knowledge is, is to deny the existence of ignorance 
sugarcoat fear and to manipulate others. Knowledge, on the other hand, provides you with the opportunity to optimize Mom. your given potential Mom, in any situation. I don't know. Uh, that looks like the doings of your brother Isaiah. A head in the sand may make you feel better in the near term, but it prevents you from going anywhere actually helpful or productive, and it lets your, you know, hold on. <clears throat> A head in the sand may make you feel better in the near term, but it prevents you from going anywhere actually helpful or productive, and it lets your, you know what, sticks out. Hold on. And it lets your, no. you know what, stick out Why unprotected ice in here was water. if what you happen to believe is big truth you will be saved by the good luck of being born into the correct culture a correct culture necessarily by definition be composed almost entirely of impeccable impeccably wise individuals of stellar quality Mom. Does that description resemble the culture in which you are immersed? No. Because the quality of your being expresses the correctness of your understanding, it is easy to determine if you and the members of your culture or subculture, including those who share your religion, profession, association, gang, or neighborhood, are enlightened. Simply taste the pudding and look at the people around you. Look at the average people in your culture and look at yourself. If you primarily see goodness, wisdom, wholeness, and love everywhere, then your belief system needs no further adjustment and you are spared growing the quality of your conscience in order to appear grown. If that is, by some unfortunate circumstance, not your situation, or if you are more interested in actually being grown than in appearing to be grown, then temporarily suspend any limiting beliefs, that is to say, all beliefs, at least long enough to ponder a few big thoughts. If you succeed, you will have greatly raised the probability that you will figure out how to improve the quality of your being. Don't worry. These unusual concepts cannot stretch your mind beyond its elastic limit. Your mind has an almost unlimited capacity to take in as well as shut out new information and new relationships between pieces of information. Some individuals believe that their belief systems are perfect, that their only problem is an imperfect implementation of those beliefs. No way. You are who you are. You absolutely reflect your abs huh. you absolutely reflect your actual beliefs completely and accurately. Let me say that again. That's so good. That'll 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 preach all on its own. You absolutely reflect your actual Mom. beliefs completely Mom. and accurately. Tell dad to come tell me he said yes. He did. Tell dad, text me. He said yes, so I can see it. Tell dad, text me yes. Go tell dad I say text me yes. <laughs> Babe! I'm going to ask him. He's in the bathroom. He would conveniently be in the bathroom right now, huh? Give me a second. When dad come out the bathroom, let me just double check. Oh, that's what dad really said. He said, tell me, or he said, come ask me. I got to check her sometime. I got to check her sometime. <laughs> the quality of your being necessarily reflects the quality, the correctness of your beliefs and understanding. Perhaps you don't know what your actual beliefs are, the real ones, not the intellectual ones you talk about. That is normal enough. Cultural, religious, scientific, and personal beliefs can be extremely subtle and are often visible and are often invisible to the individuals and to the members of the group that share them. Ain't that the truth? Religious, personal, and cultural truths are typically so ingrained 
and so obvious that they appear to define reality itself and thus are never called into question, especially those who are completely drenched in church dogma. They're so deeply ingrained into it, they can't see some of the things that are red flags. You get this out of the trash can, this is broke, broken. And they, they never question it, right? Because they can't see. They just don't question because they absolutely cannot see. Even things that's supernatural. <laughs> Bella didn't learn the game. <laughs> Even things that deem to be they deem to be I'm supernatural or being done by a certain power or whatever. It doesn't it does let me say this the right way. Okay. Even sometimes, even things that are happening, if they believe it's happening because of this, how they've been taught, that's how they're going to always believe it. And it could be totally something else. But the way that they've been taught, it lines up with what they've been taught. And when we do this and in this name, this happens. Okay? But I'm telling you, that's still wrong, right? Look at it just a little bit close and you will see there are some things that can and will not work if you do it a certain way or uh, and, and, and in an uncertain way, right? So depending on what you believe and how strong your belief is <clears throat> will determine how you operate, right? And you ain't listening to nobody else and everything else everybody is saying is blasphemy to your ears. <clears throat> Religious, personal, and cultural truths are typically so ingrained and so obvious that they appear to define reality itself. And thus are never called into question. Therein lies a major limitation of belief. When you believe that you have the right answers, there is no need to continue to seek truth or ask questions. Because Jesus said it and that's what I believe. I ain't asking or seeking nothing. I believe in Jesus and Jesus alone. The church has a bad case of this. <clears throat> now listen, my G. You're wrong. Okay, so now it's going to a little small shorter side, right? And this, oh yeah, we gonna fit, we definitely finishing this today. Okay, so the short aside is the tri, the black triangle turned to the side where he's about to explain something that he just said in the main text. Okay, people who continually question the obvious truth are annoying to those of us who know the answers. If we could only find an effective technique for re-educating the problem people who don't understand the real truth as we do, the planet would be a much better and safer place for everyone and everything. Gentle and kind terminations of the blatantly uneduc uneducatable would clearly be justified and would go on a long way toward making our world a better place for our children and future generations. We could ensure a continuing bright future for all by finally and effectively neutralizing the most undesirable and negative elements that are the root cause of all trouble. God is counting on us to manifest his will. We will be the heroes of all future generations. Are you with me, comrade? <laughs> When I when I read this, it made me think about one particular person. One particular person, especially on YouTube, that has a huge following, right? And I only say that because of how they've changed their 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 page and their tone and stuff, and even some of the videos that they do in their 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 prior military as well, right? Okay, so this is this is this is literally what they believe. If you found this book laying on top of the john in a public restroom or abandoned in an empty subway seat and open it to this page, the previous paragraph was meant to be sarcastic. I have attempted to use a little generic religio, political, historical humor to make a deadly serious point about the siren song sung to one's ego and fears, the bait. And the, and the uncompromising iron jaws, peer pressure of the belief trap, and the debilitating it and the debilitating effect it can have on the common sense of someone else. If ego, I must be right, my needs, opinions, and belief define the truth, fear of the unknown being wrong, disapproval, imperfection, failure, God, or the unholy enemy, and peer pressure, this is the way everybody else thinks, therefore it must be right or at least safe. 
have influence or veto power over what thoughts you can honestly and seriously entertain. Then you are caught in one or more belief traps, even if you don't want to terminate those degenerates who are screwing it up for the rest of us. On the other hand, if one actually thinks it is a good idea to terminate the unredeemable degenerates among us, then such an individual is not only caught in a belief trap, but it is potentially dangerous as well. Violent or forceful interdiction as a solution to a problem almost always produces the opposite of the effect intended. It usually makes the original problem much worse while greatly reducing the credibility of the forceful individual's viewpoint. And I can only tell you from where I've come from, this is what Christianity does, right? Y'all come save us and let everybody else go to hell, right? Y'all gonna burn. You're gonna burn with this planet. Really? Really? Because we don't believe in your Jesus, you're gonna go to hell, you better repent. Like you're trying to force it on everybody else. Oh, well, once all the degenerates are taken away, then we can live peacefully with sweet Jesus, right? I'm like, this this is very eye-opening. It's very interesting. And they don't realize that they do this. Like Christian people are some of the most nastiest Nice people you will ever run into in your life. They, ooh, they gets on my nerves. All of my nerves. <laughs> and I'm saying that from deep down within my sha na na. Because I come from there. And it's ridiculous some of the stuff that they do. And they don't realize that they're doing it. They're in a belief trap of their choosing and their liking. They like it to be this way. Unfortunately, and that's the end of the aside. Unfortunately, the wisdom and intended meaning of the ancient sages necessarily seem obscure from the viewpoint of those who share neither their culture nor their experience. Additionally, such wisdom and meaning are easily lost and twisted by the belief systems that others quickly establish around these individuals in order to express their ideas at the lowest, widest level of understanding. Furthermore, the self-serving concept of holier-than-thou often dilutes the significance of such knowledge further as a movement <coughs> or idea. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm, hold on. Hold on. Sorry, y'all. went down the wrong pipe. Okay. Furthermore, <coughs> the self-serving concept of holier-than-thou often dilutes the significance of such knowledge further as a movement or ideology forms to codify and extend what is essentially an individual quality of understanding and being to a more marketable group certification. No group, regardless of how small or large, can possibly create and bestow experience-based understanding, integrity, and personal growth, the basis of wisdom upon an individual. The individual must accomplish that. However, there are some things that groups and organizations can create and bestow. Power, influence, wealth, and prestige come immediately to mind. These attributes, dele delegated primarily to the group's leadership, are created by recruiting and maintaining large numbers of members or supporters. The group's members find mutual support, approval, status, political power, and security. The power of numbers is so compelling that groups spring up and are organized around every conceivable interest or idea that can support a viable membership. Large groups, movements, and organizations, from science to religion to professional societies to politics, often end up being about ego, power, money, prestige, and influence, regardless of what their original intentions were. Guilt, fear, intimidation, <coughs> excuse me, guilt, fear, intimidation, tradition, security, acceptance, identity, shared values, so socialization, and acculturation become the tools of choice to grow, maintain, and strengthen the organization and its power. In contrast, it, it, 
In contrast, it is the personal science, philosophy, and quality of the individual that must supply the fire at the creative core of human existence. Only the individual can bring content, direction, quality, and value to the power of numbers. Though my big toe is about science, philosophy, and the general organization and mechanics of reality, it is simultaneously about you, the individual. You are a vitally important element of the big picture because your individual consciousness plays a key role at the core of reality. And that, my beautiful people, finally is the end of chapter 19 of My Big Toe. And we'll start uh, chapter 20 when we come back here tomorrow. Yeah, Sabbaths are on Wednesdays now. Yeah, so we'll actually probably get all of, get through all of chapter 20. It's only a few pages. Yeah. Probably about five pages. Hold on. One, two, three, four, four pages. Because two of them are half pages. Yeah, four pages. So we'll definitely probably get through all of that tomorrow. Because the next tablet in the book of Inky is short too. So we'll probably be finished way before the time today or around about the same time. All right, beautiful people. So that is it. I hope you learned something today. Take it all in. Go do your own due diligence and research. And let your big toe or your big theory of everything, T-O-E, theory of everything, my big toe, my outlook, my perception on life and what it is we doing down here. Let it grow. Let it expand. Continue to break out of the religious dogma factions so you can be an individual who is actually, um, I'm going to be nice, that who is actually growing and developing in a healthy way. I'll put it that way. That's what we strive to do and be here, right? We strive to break all the chains of religion dogma and any other chain that can hold us back and grow in a healthy fashion while we're here all right y'all that being said i'm gonna write this page number down that's why i did that all right y'all so it is monday february the 7th 2022 day 25 of year four reading through the books of the law and the prophets another four year consecutive day count day 1043 we read tablet eight from the lost book of Enki, which the Bible and extra biblical manuscripts is apparently taken from. And then we read the rest of chapter 19 of My Big Toe, pages 139 through 142. I started listening to my favorite music that was once of the devil. Jen. Me too, girl. <laughs> my favorite music. I started listening to it again because now I've been broken out of that. Oh, you're going to go to hell. That's the devil's music. I'm like, you know what? This music knows a little bit more than you. Even the frequencies they use. Yeah. All, all, all of the music is of the devil. That's what the church says. I'm telling you. you should, some people would be absolutely flabbergasted at some of the music that I listen to. They would be fab, flabbergasted because they would think old oh, sweet sister Pam is listening to Jesus be a fence all around me every day. <laughs> I like Fred Hammond. I really do. I love Fred Hammond. I got my days where I need that gospel in me. And I go listen to it. But I'm very careful to what I listen to when I go. I completely remove anything that got the name. <laughs> this sound like blasphemy. If you call it on the name of Jesus in the songs, I don't listen to them. And there's some gospel songs that I absolutely adore. But if I hear the name, it just makes me cringe. And I was like, oh, this killed the song for me, you know. So I'm very particular about what worship music I do listen to now, right? Some of it is good. Um, a lot of it I had to completely, I just had to completely. Some of my favorite gospel songs, I've just chosen not to listen to them anymore. <laughs> just because they just keep saying the name of J.C., all the way through, and I, I, I literally cannot stomach it, y'all. I literally cannot. So I'm go back. You listen to who? Look at some of the videos we be posting. Some people think, oh yeah, James added that music. No, Sister Pam added that music. <laughs> That's being honest. That's my truth, right? Let's be honest about this, you know. So okay. 
Trina, mean, I know, right? It's just, there, there's there's such a freedom. There's such a freedom there. Some things, I mean, I still don't go overboard. I still use my good common sense and home training and stuff. You know, we don't leave the church and go crazy. But we do understand some things. We're, we're growing up. We're acting like adults now, right? Especially when Christianity has kept you locked into preschool. I'm sick of the shenanigans of the church. Okay. Let's go ahead and do the blessing. I ain't calling to the baby up here. She, all, she already got an attitude because I won't let her get ice cream right now. So we're going to do the blessing without her today till she pull herself together. Let me pull this up. All right, y'all. The blessing is found. Who is that coming down the stairs? That might be her. I hear one of the kids sliding down the stairs. And you who speak unto Moses saying, speak unto... Oh, there you go. I thought it was you. Come on. You going to do it? You got your set to... And you got the ice cream, I see. Get over here. Get over here. Come on. <laughs> Don't put it on. Why are you going to put it on that? You're going to put it on. <laughs> you got ice cream all over your hand and face. Did your dad see you eating this? Nope. So why didn't you let dad see you eating this? He went into the bathroom again? So that's why you were sitting on the steps eating the ice cream? No. Then why were you sitting on the steps eating the ice cream like he was hiding? No, I wasn't. I was, I was upstairs <laughs> Come on, your comments in my is bedroom pale. and on my bed and I was eating. First of all, you shouldn't have ice cream in your bedroom. I hear dad moving around. And you who is spake? Are you coming? Are you doing this or not, sis? <laughs> Licking water everywhere. Mm. And well, next year I take shots. You got ice cream chocolate all over the, your shirt, girl. Come yeah. on. And you who is spake unto Moses? She eating a dilly bar from <laughs> Dairy Queen. We went and got some. And she eating it. No, don't eat it. She's sitting right here on the table. Stop. <laughs> and you who will speak unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise, you shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, you who, Would you stop? Does that look gross? They don't see the ice cream right there. That's what she's trying to lick the ice cream, y'all. Quit being silly. And you who will speak unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise, you shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, Yahuwah will kneel before us, presenting gifts, and will guard us with a hedge of protection. Yahuwah will illuminate the wholeness of his being towards us, bringing order, and he will provide us with love, sustenance, and friendship. Yahuwah will lift up the wholeness of his being and look upon us, and he will set in place all we need to be whole and complete. And they shall put my name on the children of Israel, and I will bless them. All right, beautiful people. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get her. I'm going to get her. I'm going to check with her Check with her father first to see what he said. And she's going to walk with me. Let's go into the king's chambers and present this matter before him. All right, y'all. I love y'all. I'll see y'all back here tomorrow morning, bright and early, 7.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Bruce. You're not going to end it. You're just going to eat the ice cream. <laughs> Here. Yeah.